Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiha here, back with a new video. And before continuing this, I have a announcement to make. It's regarding what if Naruto the Namekaze Return series. Uh, I am going to put a hold on this series for now. I will be re-uploading the series later on. I will upload the series uh, from part two onwards in my own version. I guess you can say that because it is already uploaded on uh, Anime King's channel. So yeah. Uh, if you want to check out the original series, you can check out on Anime Kicks channel. Otherwise, I will be making my own series from here on onwards. And yeah, guys. On the meantime, I found a new story. It's a story by Lord of the Land of Fire. And yeah, guys. If you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you like the content of this channel. And without further ado, let's begin our story. Oh, by the way, it's a Naru, Hina, and Yujito ship. Just to be clear. Anyways, on to our story. Through her agony, she heard a baby's cry. She opened her eyes and focused. Give him to me, she said weakly. The attending physician checked her pulse. It was dropping dangerously. Kushina, you lost a lot of blood. You need immediate surgery or you'll be dead in no time. The sight of all that blood bothered her, but she couldn't let herself freeze up when her friend's life was at stake. She held out her arm. Sonade, give me my son. Frowning Sonade nevertheless put the wrapped child into his mother's arms. All right, but only for a moment. Then we have to begin the surgery. She carefully took her son and smiled down at him. He had his father's eyes. He was crying. Shush. Now my little one. Hush, my little heart. Your mother is here and everything is all right. And as she held him, he quieted down. It stunned her just how much she loved him. Everything is all right, my little one. She whispered to him. Pushina, I have to take him now. The man she loved, her husband, the father of the child spoke. She looked up into his face and saw his tears. No, she begged. I take it back. You can't use him for this. Please, Minato, I beg you. Not for this. Isn't it enough for that you're going to die? Must you do this to your own son? Her voice was breaking. She knew there was no choice, but she didn't care. Whose child shall I use? Minato said, sadly. How can I ask some other parent to make a sacrifice that I am not willing to make? I don't care. She willed and held him closely. It's too much to ask. It's not fair. No, Kushina, it's not. He agreed sadly. But it must be done. I am sorry, Kushina, but you have to go into the surgery right now. Sonade put a needle in her arm and injected her. No, don't. Don't. Kushina closed her eyes. Namikaze Minato, the Yondam Hokage of Konohagakure, took his newborn son into his arms and he wept unshamedly. Forgive me, my darling boy. Forgive me, my beloved son, for what I must do. He looked at Tsunade. Will she be alright? I hope so, but I can guarantee it. He nodded. He prayed that both she and Naruto would be alright, but he knew that whatever happened, he would not be there to see. Please tell her that I love her and I am truly sorry, but this is the only way. I will tell her, Tsunade promised, but she knew already. He looked at his crying son. They will see you as a hero, my son. They will honor you for your, the sacrifice you make for their sakes. Sonade watched him leave the operating room with their son. I am never going to see that brave man again. She couldn't even spend any more time regretting Minato's fate. She began the emergency surgery to try and save his wife. I shouldn't even be here. I should be in a casino hundreds of miles away. But when a friend asks you to deliver her child, how do you say no? She truly hated being in Kona. Everything here just reminded her of all the things she had lost, and now she, here she was trapped in the middle of a tragic of epic proportions. If I survive this, I swear I'm never coming back to this damn village ever again. Link break. She slowly opened her eyes. There was sunlight coming through the window. She was lying inside a small bed. Good, you're awake. A familiar voice spoke. She had to focus for a moment. Sonare? Sonare smiled and nodded. She stood up from the chair she'd been sitting on and stretched. You're very lucky that I came. It was close. So how do you feel? Tired. More tired than I can even remember being. I believe that you're going to need to stay in the bed for at least a week to fully recover. Then she suddenly remembered she sat bolt upright and was rewarded with a sharp stabbing pain in her belly. Minato! Easy! Easy! Sonade eased her back into the bed. No sudden movements. Your body is a weakened state, remember? You need to take it easy way. She looked up at her friend. Sonade, it's Minato. Sonade shook her head. I'm very sorry, Krishna. 
but he's gone. But he didn't die in vain. He stopped Gyuubi and saved the entire village. She shut her eyes and grieved for him. Oh, Naruto. Why? She opened her eyes and began to look What? Naruto. She looked at Sonata with panic. Where is Naruto? Where's my son? He's alive, Kushina, and unheard. Sonata assured her, but then looked worried. Right now, he's in the council chambers with the old man. There is an emergency meeting of the council. They are deciding his fate. What do you mean, his fate? His mother demanded. I want my son right now. Kushina, I can't bring him to you. I am sorry. Then bring me to him. She tossed off the blanket and began getting out of the bed. Stop! Sonata grabbed her. Kushina, if you push too hard, you'll just you open your wounds and die. Fine! She continued in pain. Get me a wheelchair then. I need to see my son. Seeing the look in her eyes, she knew there was no arguing with her. She turned to her assistant Shizune. Please bring me a wheelchair. Link break. The demon must be killed now. Uchiha Fugaku roared to the general approval of the council. We cannot afford to waste the heroic sacrifice of the Yontai. We must complete what he began. That would be quite short-sighted. Danza stood and spoke firmly. The child could be become Konha's ultimate weapon. Alone he could guarantee this village supremacy. And I say letting it live even a moment longer is too dangerous, Fugaku demanded. There is no it. Some them said quietly with dignity. There is him. He pointed to a crib beside his seat. Amazingly, the child was sleeping peacefully through all the shouts. Do you understand what it is that you are suggesting, Fukaku? You wish not only to murder a helpless infant, but the Yondam's only son. I am truly sorry that it is necessary to sacrifice the Yondam's son to guarantee the village survival. But how many innocents must die already? Fukaku said. I have to... Demon... I have to say that demon must be killed. Touch him and I swear I'll kill you! The woman's voice cried out from the doorway. They all stopped to look. There was Kushina Uzumaki in a hospital gown sitting in a wheelchair, being pushed by none other than Sonny Sonata. Sir Toby, give me my son. I am taking him home with me right now. Kushina demanded, How dare you interrupt us? Fugaku Uchiha spoke. This is council meeting. You have no place in my place. Is where my son is. You damn Uchiha. Kushina shot back. And as for a meeting of this council, I believe Namikaze has a hereditary seat. Does it not? With the death of my husband, I am now the head of the clan of Namikaze's husband. Koharu shouted, When were you married? A year and a half ago in verbal country. Natakon wanted to keep it a secret to protect me. He did, however, have the marriage documents filled with the Office of Citizenship, so that in case we had children, their citizenship would not be in dispute. Sarto, we can personally watch for this. Minato gave him the papers. For an argument could corrupt Sarto spoke up. It is true, and I could provide all the copies of the documents. An unhappy murmur ran through the council. Everyone had known that Kushina was the young lamb's woman. No one questioned Naruto's parentry, but it made a world of difference to them whether he was a fatherless bastard or a legitimate their heir to one of the richest and most honorable clan in Konoha. This makes no difference, Fugaku shot. Whether the child is legitimate or not, he must die to preserve Konoha. Lay a finger on him and I will kill you, bastard. Kushina threatened. And if she doesn't, then I will. Sonata crawled. I am Sonata's godmother and I'll slaughter anyone who threatens my godson. Yugiya Yashi stood up. The Hyuga clan will also protect this child. He declared loudly, which brought all the conversation to halt. Yuga and Namikaze have shared close ties for generations, and the Yondam was a dear friend to both me and my wife. Out of respect for his memory, we will not allow any harm to befall on his son. The declaration by the Yuga clan was decisive. Even Yuga knew that Fugaku Uchi had no stomach for opening opposing to Zandam, Asani, Namikaze, and Yuga. Kushina looked over to Hiyashi and bowed her head to him in deepest gratitude. Hiyashi nodded in acknowledgement. Sardobi, give me my son now. Kushina said. Nodding, Sardobi reached into the crib and did just that. His mother took him and held him close. Just there, little man. You're alright. I won't let anyone hurt you. The sight of a mother holding her child made many of the council members who had been calling for blood just moments ago reconsider. They were all ninjas. They were killers. But even for ninja, there should be limits. Fugaku Uchiha did not change his mind though. He remained silent. I am going to pass a special decree, Sardobi announced with a halt in his voice. In order to give this child some chance at a normal life, I order that no one who knows the truth of the QB be allowed to speak of it to anyone who does not. And this will include speaking of it to your own children. 
only people who shall be permitted to do so shall be the sitting Hokage and Naruto himself when he comes older. Link break. You should really still be in the bed in hospital, Kushino. Sonata repeated. No, Kushino repeated. If the council members were that savage, I certainly don't trust the regular villagers. I can't protect Naruto here than in a hospital. All the servants have worked here for years and loved Minato. I trust none of them would ever harm his son. Sonata sighed once again, defeated. Kushina gave her friend a sly little smile. So you're his godmother, huh? Funny, I don't recall me and Minato even offering you the position. Sonata looked a bit immersed. It's called a bluff. Sometimes you can convince an opponent you have more in your hand than you really do. Kushina shrugged. It's fine, Sonata. Since you volunteered, the job is yours. If anything happens to me, I expect you to take care of my son. Sonata looked a little panic. Nothing had better happen to you. I am not cut out to be a mother. Kushina enjoyed her first honest laugh since the whole ordeal had begun. You better heal me well then. Look, Kushina, Sonata said seriously. I'll stay till you're well, but once I leave, I'm not coming back. Ah, so you never want to see me or your godson ever again? She held up her son, so his smiling face was looking directly at the sun. Naruto couldn't foot miss you. Would you, my little Naruto? Sonata looked at the child a little bit. Stop it! You are shamelessly using your child's cuteness against me. Kushina gave her one of her huge smiles. Whatever works, Sonata grinned. All right, I'll tell you what. Since I have two reasons to come back here, I'll promise to return for at least a few days each year. How's that? Kushina turned her son around so that he was facing her. Well, what do you think? Naruto laughed at the funny face she made. Naruto, and I accept your terms. October, nine, five years later, as she tried to chase down her son, she wondered if all five years old could possibly have this much energy. He was always a rather excitable boy, and now he was so excited about his party, he was practically bouncing off the walls. Even with everything he had to endure, he was a very happy and in most ways very normal child. That amazed her sometimes. Naruto always seemed to be happy. She would think of things he had missing in his life, such as a father, a group of friends his own age, or the freedom to go about unwatched. She would feel guilty, think he was deprived. Yet then he would smile and laugh about, and she would be remembered and reminded of what he did have. He had a home where he was protected and watched over. He had a kind-hearted girl who was his friend, and he had a mother who loved him with all of her heart. He had love and was never alone. That seemed enough to make him a very happy little boy. They lived in a mansion on a vast estate neighboring the Yukas. They were wealthy and had loyal servants to care for Naruto. They were rich in wealth, power, and honor. That did not mean life was easy for trouble free. Naruto was rarely ever allowed to leave the Namikaze estates. When he did leave, he wore custom made body armor, had an armor squad to escort him, and had his mother there armed to the teeth. The precautions were not excessive. There had been no fewer than 47 attempts on his life, a dozen of those who had been made by shinobis and the rest being made by regular civilians and citizens. They broke her heart. Minato-kun had tried to protect her from the enemies he had made in foreign villages, but it was his own people who wanted to kill his son, the people he died to protect. The most of them, her late husband was little short of a god. The people of Konoha worshipped his memory, yet some of them saw no contradiction when they tried to kill his son. She did try to argue with or convince them. She just killed him. All around the perimeters of the Namikaze estates were large red signs with blocky black letters. The signs informed one and all the trespassers would be killed on sight without warning. And they were. She had been one of the most powerful journey of the verbal country when she'd met and fallen in love with Minato. Since her pregnancy, she's not gone on a single mission, but she kept her skills sharp and put them to regular use. So far, she had killed 14 shinobi, including one chunin and one chonin, and 137 citizens. She carried a razor sharp four foot long katana and was a blade master. She had no problem telling it on anyone who threatened her child. Minato had been the world leading seal master, surpassing even his master Chiraya. Every inch of the perimeter and every entry was on the mansion had been warned. 
she was no seal master but Minato had showed her enough to maintain and use the seals they put there. No one could enter the Namikaze stairs or mansion without her knowing it and when anyone did so without her permission she killed them. She never asked them for their reasons or offered to let them surrender. Last year in the early morning of October 10th half of a dozen men managed to scramble over the 10 foot high iron fence and barred wire. They were clearly drunk and armed with nothing more deadly than bats and broken bottles. She could easily have knocked them out and tied them up. She didn't. She separated their heads from their drunken bodies and piled them outside her front gate where people could see them. The Hokage had called her into his office after that and asked her why she had done that to men who were no real threat to her. Kushina replied that everyone in Konoha knew where the Nomikaze estates were and who lived there. Those men had gone there deliberately, ignored the warnings on the big red signs and proceeded to climb over a 10 foot iron fence topped with barbed wires. If they were willing to do all that for the sake of trying to harm her son then they were serious enough to deserve killing. Legally there was really nothing Sarada could do. When Konoha had been founded the clans had been granted special privileges, one being that the clan were given the right to deal with trespassers in any fashion they chose, up to and including killing them on the spot. Kushinina deliberately fostered a frightening reputation. She thought that that was the best answer for such a mindless fear and hate. Since that incident, there had been only 40 attempts in the past years. Ling went, Hey, Mom! Mom! Nanata jumped around her. Yes, dear? After the party, can we go train somewhere? His mother smiled at him and nodded. If that's what you want to do, then of course, dear. Yeah! He shouted and ran off again. He was only five, but she had been giving him training. She had brought him up on stories of his father, the part of his legacy he knew well. The other part would wait for a few more years. He had embraced his heritage as the son and heir of the great man and was determined to even become greater than him. He wanted to be a Hokage and protect the village as his father had done. That was her son's dream and she would do everything in her power to make it happen. So far she had given him Taijutsu training started on basic weapons, moon and shurikens. He was already itching to get a katana in his hand, but he would have to master Kun and Shuriken first. He left training with her. No exercise was too hard or too repetitive so long as he was doing it with her. She would start giving him ninjutsu training before he entered the academy. She had already decided that he would attend the academy, not so much for the instructions as for the chance to interact with his peers. If he was going to become Hokage one day, then he would need to know how to deal with people in different situations. Link break. Yashi, his wife, Hana, and their little daughter Hinata arrived. Welcome and thank you so much for coming. Kushina greeted since that day in the council meeting, Yashi and the Yuga clan were about to the only people in Konoha willing to treat Naruto like a normal child. Only those rare occasions she had to be away, he stayed at the Hokage <coughs> Yuga mansion under their protection. It is our pleasure, Yashi stated. Hinata has been looking forward to this week. Hana said with a smile. Naruto stepped forward and offered them a proper greeting. He then turned to Hinata, his favorite playmate and only friend of his own age, and gave her a huge smile. Hey Hinata-chan, want to play? The little girl immediately blushed and pressed her index finger to well. Sure, Naruto can. He grabbed her hand and led her away. As the two of them went off to play, the parents all shared a smile. Don't they make a cute couple? Kushina asked. They do indeed. Yashi yeah, spoke. <clears throat> Kakashi Nisan! Naruto shouted excitedly. The onbook captain and former student of his father smiled at him from beneath his mask. Yo, happy birthday, Naruto. Can you summon your dog so I can play with them? He asked eagerly. Sure. Kakashi gave him a nice smile. Kakashi had taken it upon himself to watch over his beloved senses son. When Naruto left the estates, Kakashi was always the one in charge of the on escort. He also made it a point to visit him regularly to share stories about his father. Naruto in return had come to look up to him as an older brother, which Kakashi really enjoyed and saw Naruto as a source of his lost light in his life. Link break. The door opened to reveal a ninja with huge spiky white hair and red lines running down his eyes. Look my little one, do you know who this is? Barbie granddad, he sang out. A vein immediately began to throb on Jiraiya's forehead. Kid, I've told you before not to call me that. Naruto-kun, where did you come up with that name? Kushina sir, sounding surprised. Her son looked up at her in confusion. You told me to call him that, mommy. Oh, that's right. Now I remember, she sent Jiraiya a big smile. He's going to end up with your sense of humor, Jiraiya said flatly. 
Yes, I suppose he will. Kami, help us. Is there a sake? Think break. Godmother! Auntie Shizune! Naruto jumped into Tsunade's arms. He was immediately caught up and smothered in kisses from the two women. Tsunade put him and smiled. Well, Naruto, is it just my imagination or do you just keep getting cuter every time I see you? He put his hands behind his head and gave her a huge smile. No, I'm getting cuter. Both women burst out laughing. Oh, I agree with you definitely. Shizune said. Kushina watched with an impish grin. Still don't think you're cut out for motherhood. Tsunade sent her friend a grin. A few days a year are my limit, and any more than that, and I'll go crazy. Tsunade, good to see you again. A slightly tipsy Jiraiya came out. She sent Kushina a betrayed look. I didn't know he was going to be here. Why did you tell me he'd be here? Kushina smiled. I wanted you to come. Frowning, Tsunade grabbed the bottle of sake Jiraiya was holding. Give me that! She bought it to her lips and down it in one swing. Is something wrong, Godmother? She smiled down at Naruto with a bit more color in her cheeks. Oh no, honey, I'm just happy. Jiraiya laughed. Wait, a couple of hours ago, she'd be even happier. Kushina just managed to cover up her son's eyes so he didn't see Grand Godmother starting beating on Granddad. Link break. Hello, Naruto. Happy birthday. Hey, old man. Naruto said. Naruto kun, please show your guest the proper respect and call him Hokage sama. Kushina said gently. What? An insult did Jiraiya approach them. His left eye was closed and the large black eye made an interesting contrast to the rest of his face. I am Jiraiya, one of the three ninjas of legend, the all-knowing toad sage, as well as respected and famous author. How come you have Naruto treat Sartobi with respect but not me? Kushina sent him a frosty smile. Sartobi never tried to peep on me in the bathhouse. It was a compliment. Oh yeah? Well, if you ever try and compliment me like that again, I'll take something a lot more precious to you than your life. Her eyes dropped to a spot below his belt. He suddenly stiffened and walked away. I'm getting more sick before Sonata drinks it all. Excuse me. The Hokage let out a depressed sigh. My students. Think break. As she talked to Hona, she felt a familiar sensation of her arm. Damn it, why now? Keeping a serene look on her face, she excused herself. She calmly walked to an outer hallway. Seeing she was alone, she quickly rolled up her sleeves to expose her left forearm. On it was an intricate tattoo of a tree with branches and 132 leaves. Each leaf contained a number. The tattoo was, of course, a seal. Manjuraya had been kind enough to give her that connected her to all the wards on the estate. Looking at the tattoo, the three tree trunks, branches, and leaves all seemed to made of blank inks, except, except for the leaf that wore the number 77. That one was red. She rolled the sleeve back down and casually headed towards the front door. Her habit of always being armed and in her gear meant she didn't have to waste time getting ready. With luck, she could be back before anyone even noticed she was gone. Mom! Naruto ran up to her just as she was heading for the door. She let out a small sigh. He seemed to have a sixth sense when it came to her leaving or returning. Mom, where are you going? He lashed onto her leg. Smiling, she reached down and stroked one of his whisker cheeks. Mommy just needs to take care of something. Then I'll be right back. He tightened his grip on her leg. Don't go, Mom. I want you to stay. She looked into his face and saw that he was scared. He was a very strong and brave boy. Most of the time, he handled things with a maturity far beyond his years. But then there were times when he behaved like a five-year-old. More specifically, he acted like a five-year-old whose mother was his entire world. He usually hit it well, but she knew he hated it whenever she was away. Smiling, she bent down and gave him a comforting hug. It's alright, my little dear one. She looked at the grandfather clock in the hall. Nartikun. What time does the clock say? He looked over at the large ornate clock. It says 7.33. She gave him a confident look. Mommy will be back five minutes before the clock says 7.38. This seemed to calm his fears. Promise, Mommy? I promise. She gave him a small kiss on the cheeks. I never go back on my bars. That is my ninja, my ninja way. Now go and play with Hinata. Naruto nodded and went into his familiar room where Hinata was rubbing Pakkon's belly. She checked her watch and hurried to the door. Kushina had watched the scene play out and a suspicion what was going on. Anything I can help you with Kushina? She sent the young Anbu captain a light hearted smile. Oh no, just woman's work. 
Ling Prince. She didn't have trouble finding him. He was hiding in some bushes and on the northern end of the estate where the woods were. Then all this thought the south end where the trees and shrubs were. Never mind that. There were 300 yards of flat ground and mowed grass to the mansion. You're early, her voice called to him. The, the single man jumped to his feet, pulled out his weapon and looked up. There about 20 feet above him stood a beautiful woman with long red hair, as she was currently defying gravity standing parallel to the ground. Her feet planted on the tree trunk, her hair dropped off to the side. She was dressed in a black bodysuit with a very dark red stripes running down the arms and legs. Around her forehead, she wore a hitaite, but not one of the leaf symbol. Her eight, her, hers had eight lines curving to meet in the center, like a pinwheel or purple. Along her belt, she had several pouches and some bulky lines along her body, suggesting she wore body armor underneath. He could see the handle of a weapon sticking out from her left shoulder. Read that, he gasped. She smiled and nodded. Yeah, that's what idiots like you call me. It's fine, since that's exactly what I am to anyone who threatens my son. She looked at her watch. I have to be back in three and a half minutes. That's how long you have left to live. She looked down at him, considering. You know, I decided to celebrate his birthday a day earlier because every October 10th, I have to deal with idiots like you. The first year, I had to deal with th three separate groups. One of them led by a tuning. So after last year, I finally decided to just celebrate it a day earlier. I mean, so long as he gets to eat cake, open presents, and play with some people, he's happy. Maybe next year, we'll just celebrate in July or August. She looked at her watch again. Three minutes to just go now. Why? The man choked out. Why watch? Why am I talking to you? Why do I love double mint fudge? Why do you protect that monster? He never saw them coming. All he saw were her arms moving in a flare. The next thing he knew was one the ground screaming. A dozen kunais were jutting out of him. As he continued to cry out, she spoke to him in a clear, calm voice. You're not very bright, are you? Here's a tip. Never tell a mother her child is a monster. Here's another tip. If you're just a villager with a rusty sword, don't get on and take on a ninja, especially not if she's used to be an army captain in her homeland. Just one more tip before we die. When you see a big red sign posted everywhere, you should pay attention to them. She glanced and watched her watch. Two minutes. Despite his pain and being at her mercy, he looked up at her in pure hate. He killed my father. He crushed him. Who did? She asked, not caring to make anything easy. You know who. If you mean my son, I don't see how he could as he's not very heavy. You mock me. He growled. No, I don't like you at least a little bit to mock you. I find you and your kind utterly despicable. I am sorry for the loss of your father to QB. Though I doubt you believe the fact that I mean that I lost my husband and a loved one. I hate the QB as much as everyone in this village, but hating the prisoner is no way justifying attack his jailer. He has the QB inside of him. That's right, she said. My husband gave his life to imprison the QB and my son will spend every day of his life keeping the QB in prison. Just so you know, this is the last minute of your life. He has to die to protect this village. As he watched the one they called the red that leapt down beside him, she reached over her shoulder and pulled out a long, thin curve. No, she said firmly. He has to live to protect this village. He is my husband's legacy. He has all the mineral strength inside of him. I can see in him that same love and courage that he, my husband, holds. And when I look close, I can see the greatest of all future Hokage in him. He will protect this village someday as his father did. And now, she lifted her katana high over her head. Go to whatever hell is reserved for those who kill children. The sword fell and did it work in a single cut. Link break. She ran in and looked at a clock. Ha! Huh, Fifteen seconds to spare. She quickly approached her son, confident he would not notice anything. One of the advantages of wearing black and dark red was the blood stains were practically invisible. See, my dear one, mommy made it back just like she promised. Naruto looked up at her excited mom. Can we open the presents now? Kushina smiled and nodded. Of course, dear one. Anything for you. He was standing 
in front of a mirror looking at himself. The body armor felt a little snug like always, but he liked the way it looked. You look so handsome, my little Naruto, his mother said happily. He looked at her mother and hesitated a bit. Mom, he said, is it alright to be scared? With a gentle smile, she went down on her knee and hugged him tight. My little one, of course it is. I felt fear many times. You? He asked and looking at her shocked. She laughed and pulled him into another hug. Of course, being shinobi does not mean we stop being a human. Bravery is not having a lack of fear. It's the ability to do what you need to do, even in the face of your fear. Always do what you know to be right, even if you are afraid. If you do that, I will always be proud of you. He immediately hugged her back fiercely. I want you to be proud of me, mom. My little one, I have never been anything else. When he finally let go of her, she got up to get his coat and help him put it on. Once it was on, he looked at him in the mirror again. Mom, if I were this, everyone is going to notice me. He looked at her questioningly. You always say a good ninja should be able to blend in anywhere. Won't this make me stand out? She nodded, pleased that he had taken that lesson to heart. Most boys his age were eager to stand out. Naruto wanted to earn people to respect through his actions. He didn't care about simply being noticed for how he looked in this village Naruto. There is no avoiding that. When you begin your shinobi career and travel to other places, you can try and become invisible. But in Konoha, everyone who looks at you will know who you are. Suddenly her face changed and she gave him one of her rare stern looks. Inside he panicked and wondered if he had done something wrong. Listen very carefully to what I am about to say Naruto. Failing a bit, he nodded and gave his mom a complete attention look. People are going to look at you, and some of them will hate you. Don't even ever wonder if it's your fault if they look at you with hate. Those people are blind and will never see the truth no matter how many times you show it to them. But for everyone else, try and show them what is in here. She gently touched his chest and hair. She touched his forehead, showing all them that you are an Amikaze Naruto. You are your father's son, and you are my son. In you, all of the best of the Namikaze and Uzumaki clans live. In you, my son, is a great man and great leader. Someday you will be a clan head, and I have no doubts you will be the greatest of Hokages. She shut her eyes and tried not to sob. Oh, Minato, if only you could see him, how proud he would be. She thought to herself, Mother, why are you crying? Naruto felt himself about to start crying as well, and didn't know why. Opening her eyes, she quickly wiped her cheeks and gave him a reassuring smile. I am crying because I am worried the world will be unfair to you. Naruto, I want you to promise me something. Anything, mom. Promise me that whatever happens in your life, no matter how many may hate you, no matter what terrible secrets you may learn, and no matter how hard things you may become for you, Promise me that you will never forget who you are. He put his arms around her and hugged her with all of his might. Mom, I swear to you on my life that I will never forget who I am or who I come from. That's my promise of a lifetime. And you never go back on your word because that is your Nindu. She smiled at her son. He nodded, just like yours. She gave her son a kiss on the cheek and brightened a bit. Very well, Naruto. Let's go. Or your silly mother will make you late for your first day of academy. Link break. Are you alright, Inasa san? Kurone asked, feeling real sympathy for the poor girl. She seemed very depressed. I am fine, she said dully. Please just call me Hinata. Just a short while ago, her father had told her that he was disappointed in her and did not think she was a worthy successor. Since her mother died two years ago, her father had grown increasingly distant and critical. These harsh words not only hurt her, they played on her own self doubt. I'm weak. Maybe father is right. Hey, Hinata chan. Her thoughts lifted when she heard his voice. He and his mother were approaching. She immediately noticed how he was dressed. Oh, he hello, Naruto. Can you look, look very handsome today. She felt herself beginning to blush as she smiled shyly. Her index fingers were pressing against each other. Naruto gave her one of her biggest smiles and scratched the back of his head. Thanks, Hinata chan. You look as cute as you always do. Being this immediately, she went three shades of red darker. Kurnei offered a formal bow to the woman who was the head of the Namikaze clan. I am Yuri Kurnei, and I am most honored to meet you, Kushina-san. I thank you for allowing Hinata and I to accompany you and your son. Kushina smiled and returned to bow. Please call me Kushina. 
and you are welcomed. Inata is a dear child and I welcomed one more set of eyes to watch out for trouble. Inata laughed and the two of them looked at her and Naruto. Koronai grinned and sent Kushina a questioning look. Kushina grinned and nodded. Two onboard operative landed about 20 feet from them. One of them approached and bowed to Kushina. Kushina Sama. I am Captain Denso and I am in charge of the two men's squad that will escort your son to the academy back to your estate as well. Kushina acknowledged him with a slight bow of her own. Thank you, Captain. With Kakashi out of the village, I trust that you will make sure of my son's safety. Kakashi thinks highly of you and I trust his opinion. If he trusts you, then I will as well. Thank you, Kushina's son. He and his partner disappeared. Kushina turned to two children. Shall we go? Yeah, come on, Hinata. As was his habit, he grabbed her hand and led the way. As was her habit, she blushed and followed him. Hinata kept a small grin as all they walked in public. Though she knew they were only friends, she let herself pretend for a bit that he was her boyfriend and they were strolling hand in hand. As they went down the streets, they noticed Kushina had warned her son. Everyone in Konoha knew instantly who he was and if some by bizarre miracle they hadn't what he was wearing would have driven out home. The reception was about what Kushina had expected. Perhaps one of the ten people openly scowled or looked angrily at them, but no one dared to yell or curse at them. Never mind approach them. Kushina's reputation was such that even on crowded streets they tended to be given at least 10 feet of space. About 1 in 10 actually bowed or cheered as they passed. These were the people whom Naruto was the only son not the QB. To them at least Naruto really was a hero or at least the son of a hero which would do. To Kushina this minority represented how everyone in Konoha should have behaved towards their son. Seeing them Kushina had a small hope that things would go for better in the future. Actually, they had gotten better. There had no attacks for a year and a half, not even at least on the anniversary. Kushina wasn't sure if that meant people were finally becoming understanding or that she had finally killed enough. It is to make her point clear. Probably a combination of both, but so long as they stop attacking Naruto, I don't really care why. So 10% still hated them. 10% love him. And the others, 80%, they got out of the way and kept their faces blank. What were they thinking? A Yamanaka might have known, but she didn't. Were the majority just better at hiding their hatred or were just simply accepting things? Time would shall tell her, I suppose. Link break. So, what are you up to, forehead girls? A loud blonde eight year old girl shouted. What do you mean, Ino Pink? A fierce pink haired girl replied. I know you're planning to sit near Sasuke Kun. Well, go ahead and give it up. No one is getting Sasuke but me. Sasuke Kun is going to fall in love with me, you know, big. He and I share one soul. It's destiny. Destiny. Let me tell you something. I. She suddenly noticed a small group entering the academy grounds. She noticed one person in particular, an extremely well dressed and muscular looking blonde boy. He was walking with hand in hand with a Yuga. Hello. Or to Inopeg, Sakura snapped her fingers in front of her best friend slash worst enemy. What is wrong with you? Hey Sakura, who is that? She pointed. I thought I knew all the hot boys in Konoha, but I'd never seen him before. Sakura took a look. Hmm, I don't know. But back to Sasuke, I, a dark haired girl who wore her hair in pigtails, suddenly squealed. It's him, Delona said. Who? Ino asked curiously. Delona gave him a dreamy look. The young damn son. Link break. Upon reaching the academy ground, they stopped. Checking her watch, she saw the kids had five minutes. She put a hand on her shoulders. Put son. Did you bring everything? She asked him. Yes, mom. Do you have your lunch? He nodded. Do you have your kunai shurikens? Yes, and they are all sharp. I see you have your sword. He wore it on his back like she did. Is that sharp too? He frowned. Well, it is sharp as I can get, but it's just a regular old sword. Now, if I had a katana. No, she continued. You have your radio communicator? Of course, and it's present to the emergency frequency. If anything happens, just hit the button, and I will be here in less than two minutes. I know, mom, he said in a bored tone. He loved her, but she was treating him like a little kid. Now, if anyone's attack you for any reason, even if it is an instructor or someone in Anbu uniform. I hit the communicator and fight with the sword. And when the sword is drawn, when the sword is drawn ready, it take is to take blood. And when the sword is drawn, safety comes only in death of your foes. Kushina nodded. That was the correct answer. She hadn't expected anything less. She racked her brain trying to 
think of anything that might have been overlooked. Oh, Naruto, did you put on clean underwear this morning? Hinata couldn't help herself. She started kicking. Naruto put his head in his hands. Please, mom, you're embarrassing me. Link break. The Yondaim son? Hino said excitedly. I didn't know he was going to be in our class. Delona, did you know? Are you sure it's him? The girl rolled her eyes. Look at him for a second. He's practically a younger version of the Yondaim. Plus, if Zad knows enough, look who he's talking to. Red-haired Konoichi with a sword and a purple Hitate. Hina's job dropped. Of course, she was the queen of all gossips and knew about everyone who was anyone. So, of course, she knew all about her. Namikaze Kushina. I don't believe it. It's really her. The red de- hmm. Sakura slapped a hand over her mouth. Are you crazy? Sakura whispered to her rooted blonde friend. You know the stories. If she hears you call her dad, she'll kill you. No, Delona said with certainty. If it's you, say her name three times in a row in a dark room room. Another girl spoke up. I heard that if she catches you alone after dark, she'll cut your head off and bring it home with her. Well, I heard that she comes to cut your head off if you do it before you get married. Another girl spoke up. Do what? Sakura spoke. You know, finally managed to get her surprisingly out of her stupider. Enough! Ino turned to rail at Sakura and the other girls. What is wrong with all of you? You give Konoichi a bad name. She's obviously just a powerful ninja and nothing else. I swear you all a bunch of chickens. How are you going to be a ninja if you are scared of a bunch of wild stories? Oh really? Sakura asked. Well, I don't see you going up to talk to her. If you are so brave, go and say something to her. I would, but I don't have anything to say, Ino replied. Sakura grinned. Sure, Ino chicken. Sure. A couple of the girls began to chuckle. You know, face darkened. There were two things she never allowed people to question her fashion sense and her courage. Fine, I'll show you what a real con each is. She hurried to where the verbal ninja was, talking to the miniature young time. You know, actually smiled. Maybe I can really make a good impression on him. Link break, Nata Khan. Nata asked quietly. She was looking at the academy and other children nervously. Yes, Nata Chan. Looking into his clear blue eyes, she found herself wishing she was more like him. He didn't have any weakness. She seemed to be nothing but Naruto-kun. She has stated she would never admit that, but to uh, she never she would never admit this to her father. But she felt sure that Namikaze and Kurunai would not tell him, and she was desperate for some comfort. Naruto-kun, I'm scared. She jam- she immediately cast her eyes down. I know that I shouldn't be, but I am. It's okay, you know the John. I am scared too, a little bit. Her eyes shot up as she stared at him, not blaming you. He grinned. Yeah, me. But it's all right because even though we're shinobi, we're still human too. Being brave isn't about not feeling fear. It's about overcoming the fear to do what you have to do. She began pressing her fingers together nervously. What if you're not strong enough to overcome the fear? Naruto reached out and took both her hands into his. Inata Chan. I'm sure you have all the strength you need to meet the challenge. Any challenge. I believe in you. Those were the kindest words she heard since her mother had passed. And they meant much more than her world. But Naruto said to her, Naruto, can I, I, feel, I feel courage when I look at you. She swallowed. She wasn't quite that brave. Yet. I feel strong now. Irarikato. Kushina smiled. My Naruto-kun, you've grown up very wise. Maybe we shouldn't even bother with the academy after all. Maybe we should just give you the graduation test right now. He looked at her excitedly. If I pass, will you give me your katana? No. Hello? They all turned to look at a young blonde girl in purple dress and long leggings wrappings. Hello? Kushina answered. The girl immediately bowed to her. I am Imunea- I am Yamanaka Ino. This is my first day at the academy. I was hoping to make some new friends. She sent Naruto a huge smile. Hinata got the feeling that Inu didn't even see her. Inu looked at Kushina and spoke carefully and thought she was treading a minefield. Am I mistaken in believing that you are Namikaze Kushina and that this is your very handsome son? Kushina gave the girl a slight nod. She didn't miss the way she was eyeing her son or the nervous way Hinata was pressing her index fingers together. Kushina let out a small sigh. Well, I wanted him to interact with his peers. He was bound to meet a girl beside Sinata sometimes. I didn't expect the very first to be quite so friendly. I am Kushina and this is my son Naruto. Yuga Hinata and Yuhi Kurunai. I am pleased to meet you as well, Ino. She offered Kushina another bow. I am greatly honored to meet you, Kushina-san. 
She turned her full attention to Naruto. I am very happy to meet you, Naruto Kun. Kushina raised an eyebrow. Very friendly. Naruto stood there and sp simply pressed her index fingers together even more nervously. Kun? She just met him. And she's already calling him Naruto Kun? She's very pretty and very sure of herself. Not like me. Naruto gave her a very, very small, very smile. A slightly bow. He wasn't sure what to make of her, but he didn't want to offend anyone on the first day. I am very happy to meet you as well, Ino. She laughed and put her hand on his arms. Oh, please, call me Ino-chan. She gave Hinata a quick glance. And is this your friend? Not an order. Yes, he's Hinata. She's Hinata-chan, my best friend. Ino turned her full attention on Hinata now. She was still smiling, but the smile was not the same one she had given Kushina Naruto. The one had something but predatory in it. Oh, Hinata-chan, I hope we can be friends too. It's so sweet that Naruto-kun thinks of you as his best friend. Most boys aren't comfortable having girls as just friends. It's nice that Naruto doesn't have trouble seeing that way towards you. While I have to get to the class, I'll see you inside. She reached out and touched his arm again. Bye, Naruto-kun. As she walked away, she put just a little bit of sway in her hips. Hinata looked down at the crown in about half a minute that girl had managed to make her feel completely ugly and plain. She obviously wasn't sure not someone Naruto -kun would ever choose to be with. Weird, Naruto said. Without a thought, he grabbed Hinata's hand and began leading her to the academy. Come on, Hinata-chan, we don't want to be late. He was looking at the academy as completely missed the looks of relief on Hinata's face. Kushina why the two of them go and with a shake of her head, she, it suddenly occurred to her that of all the lessons she had given her son on history, ethics, maths, taijutsu, weapons, chakra control and other objects, she hadn't spoken to him even once about girls and how to deal with them. She shook her head, not blaming she had completely forgotten something so vital. Great, we sent him into battle completely unarmed. Well, if he survives today, I'll start explaining about girls tonight. After all, they are at least as dangerous to him as assassins. Link break. Wow, I can't believe you actually talked to her, you know. What did you say? Deluna was pulling on her pigtails excitedly. Forget her. What did he say? The young damn son and their girl asked. Oh, you mean Nartakun? She said indifferently. Nartakun? You actually called him that? Deluna practically screamed. I sure did. You know sounded as though it was the best thing she had done and achieved in the world. Let's get to the class. Uh, let's get to the class. Sorry about the tongue slip. Uh, anyways, let's get to the class. I'll tell you all about talking to Naruto in there. Hey, you know, big, don't think I didn't see what you did. You were flirting with him. How dare you do that to Sasuke Kun? You know, send Sakura a self satisfied little smart. Sasuke, who? As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of, guys. Comment down below if you like this series. And yeah, as I have told you, I will be continuing the series of What If Naruto Tanami Kaze Return, but after a little while, just so I can finish the fanfiction and try to make it in my own version. Yeah. And yeah, guys, um, I may have another announcement. I will make it in the next part of What If Naruto Was the Fifth Okage that will be uploaded today as well. Stay tuned for that. This is Apollo Uchiha and I am signing out. Peace.